Is it gonna come together? Is it? Is it? Potato dough that's not even gonna work. It would not be a video by me without any chaos. Potato noodles, yay or nay? It's Rose and welcome back to She's Lazy Vegan and another cook with me video. Today's video is going to be a true cook with me in a sense that I have not tried this before, but I am very much intrigued. Yes, so I saw this video the other day on YouTube and I was like, oh my God, I must try this. So it's a video by this YouTube channel. I think it's called Look At You. And uh, she made these noodles out of potatoes, yay! <laughs> I could not believe my eyes. And I also was like, oh my God, why have I not thought of this before? Because this recipe, guys, is only two ingredients. Two, two ingredients. And these noodles look absolutely fantastic. They look super thick, super chewy, and just totally out my alley. You guys know I love a chewy noodle. So I'm basically going to try making these noodles. So I haven't made this before, but by the look of it, it really reminds me of Korean rice cakes, also known as thok in Korea. And if you've ever made or tried spicy Korean rice cakes, it is super chewy, super doughy, delicious. It is like the best thing ever, okay? I'm super excited. I'll link the original video down below as well. I'm gonna be making a different kind of sauce with this. I'm thinking like a tteokbokki sauce because I feel like this is gonna taste like hopefully and then we're gonna make a sauce that's kind of like the pokey I'm very excited let's get started <laughs> so I'm gonna be making the noodles according to the original recipe which I'll link the video down below but I'll also be making a different sauce so I'm gonna link my recipe below as well in a blog post and I'm also gonna link the uh, original video I saw below because she uses a different sauce but that's also vegan and that looks delicious too so you should definitely try that sauce as well and obviously I can't take credit for this for this dish even though I wish I thought of it anyway the first ingredient that we're going to need for our two ingredient potato noodles is, you guessed it guys, potatoes, okay? So, we're gonna need to peel these bad boys. I'm just using russet potatoes, okay? Just regular, good old russet potatoes, it's cheap. First thing we're gonna do is bring some water to a boil, because we're gonna be boiling the potatoes. Next, we're gonna want to peel the potatoes. So let's do that. So I really wish I came up with this recipe because you know what? You know what? Because this recipe, guys, it reminds me of gnocchi. So gnocchi is basically a pasta made of potatoes and like flour. Like it's very simple. It's basically potatoes and flour. And I've always said that gnocchi is probably the closest thing to Korean rice cakes when it comes to texture. Except for, you know, gnocchi isn't as chewy and it's not as sticky as Korean rice cakes are, but it's probably the closest thing. So when people ask me like, what is Korean rice cakes like? I sometimes say, even though Koreans probably will disown me if I say it, that it's kind of like Italian gnocchi. So this recipe seems to be quite similar to gnocchi, but it kind of looks like Korean rice cakes a little bit. So I'm hoping that it will exceed my expectations. All right, lovely. I'm gonna give these a quick little rinse. And now we can chop the potatoes. I want to just cut it quite small so that it boils quickly, because I'm impatient. I mean, when I saw this video, I was like, I'm definitely gonna make this because you know what? If there's one thing I will always try, it's a two ingredient recipe, okay? I love a short recipe list. I'm one of those people, I look at the ingredients list and I'm like, if it's too long, I skip it. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, I look for a shorter list, mm-hmm. That's why so many of my recipes are very minimal ingredients, I try anyway. Um, unless it's like a Christmas recipe or like a really special day or like a really special, you know, recipe, I try to keep the ingredients list as short as possible because I just know me and I feel like there's people like me somewhere in the world that also want a short ingredients list. Potatoes are chopped. Water is boiling, as you can see here. So we're gonna add our potatoes. Right. 
We're gonna boil this until it is nice and soft and ready to mash. So while your potatoes are boiling, of course you can get your second ingredient ready, and then you're basically done when it comes to the ingredients for the noodles. So the second ingredient you're gonna need, and this is gonna be that magical ingredient that's gonna make this super chewy, at least that's what I am hoping, and that is what it's supposed to do. The second ingredient is potato starch, yay! I mean, really you could call this a one ingredient recipe because potatoes, potato starch, potato starch comes from potatoes, Really, it's just one ingredient. Now, potato starch might be a little bit harder to find, so if you can't find potato starch, you can use corn starch. I actually don't know if it would make any sort of difference when it comes to texture. I don't think it would, because I always use potato and corn starch kind of interchangeably. So yeah, you can use whatever. And I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that corn starch is cheaper than potato starch, and it's just a lot easier to find corn starch. So you can substitute for corn starch. Obviously, I'm only gonna try it today with potato starch, but I feel like it's gonna be the same. That's, that's my guess, because, you know, it's just, it's starch. All right, you guys, so I got the potato starch ready. Now I'm in a little bit of a pickle, okay? But I'll tell you guys why. So in the written recipe that I'm following, it says two cups of potato starch or 400 grams, okay? I generally like to follow the grams because I feel like it's more accurate. However, I was weighing out the grams and it looked like a lot more than two cups. So I was like, hmm, interesting. So what I did was Originally, I weighed out the 400 grams, and then in this bowl, I have two cups, okay? So we have a bit more here. So it's definitely less than 400 grams. Um, here, I have about 300 grams. So I'm gonna start with this, okay? And then see if I need more, because I'd rather have the option to add more than to try to take it away, which you can't. I'm gonna start with less and see how it goes, and I will inform you of how much I actually use, okay? All right, guys, so the potatoes have cooked completely, so you should be able to very easily poke your potatoes, okay? So now we're just gonna mash. You guys know how to mash potatoes. I'm using a fork, and we're gonna mash it so it's nice and smooth, okay? And they should be very easy to mash once again because you should have cooked them. Be very nice and smooth. All right, guys, so now we have the mashed potatoes. Into the mashed potatoes, we're gonna add our potato starch. So again, we're gonna start with the 300 grams, and then if we need to, add more. And then I'm also supposed to add some water. Ah! And then we have to just mix until we have a dough. So I may go in with the hands very soon, if not now. Okay, ooh. I may need to add more water. It feels a little dry, I don't know. We're working with potatoes, I feel like it depends on the moisture of the potato that you have. I feel like different types of potatoes have different levels of moisture. It gets coming together, but it still feels separate. Cause like right now, I can't really like roll it. It kind of breaks apart. She's a little dry, she's a little thirsty. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water because I feel like I need it. Oh, maybe I need to add the rest of the starch. Ooh, that could be it. Yeah, it seems that potatoes are, yeah, let's see. Cause right now if I try to roll it, it's still coming apart. So I am gonna add the starch, because the starch is really gonna be the thing that kind of binds it together. Is it gonna come together or no? <laughs> is it gonna come together? Is it, is it? Okay, so I think it's kind of starting to come together, but it's still like kind of breaking apart, so I don't really know what I'm supposed to do here. This doesn't work. I'll be very sad. <laughs> like, did I measure something wrong? I don't think I did. I'm just not really sure if I'm where I'm supposed to be. I kept trying really, really hard to get this to come together, but it never did. So I actually checked the original recipe again and realized, once again, I did not read the instructions. Turns out the type of potato is very important. I should have used yellow potatoes instead of russet potatoes. <laughs> you can't say I don't try. Time to start over. <laughs> so, I got me some yellow potatoes. Yellow fleshed, is that the same thing as yellow? Yes, okay, yellow potatoes. If this doesn't work, I will cry. Okay, I'm just gonna restart, mash the potatoes, and then we'll get back into it. Okay 
guys. So, oh my lord. Looks like it was definitely the potato. It has definitely come together a lot more than <laughs> before. So definitely use yellow potatoes, my friends. Okay, so now I can actually roll it without breaking. Holy moly. I, I just brought you to my kitchen counter because that table was just not doing it for me. And then I'm supposed to divide this log into 16 pieces. So glad this is working. <laughs> Learn from my mistakes, my friends. Learn from my mistakes. It would not be a video by me without any chaos, right? We have these little uh, pieces of dough here. And then I think I'm just supposed to roll this baby up into thick noodles. Hopefully I can get it really long. So I used a mixture of uh, cornstarch and potato starch for this because I ran out of my potato starch. I don't know how long we want it to be. I think that's good enough. We want thick, round noodles, right? Ooh! So we got one. All right, I'm gonna repeat with the rest and then we can finally cook up the noodles. All right, you guys. Woo! Now we have the noodles behind me and we are going to boil them in some boiling water for only five minutes. Oh my gosh. Some of them are still a little bit dry. So they are breaking a little bit, but that's okay. At this point, I don't care. Just give me some noodles. I hope they uh, don't stick together. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm gonna mix together the sauce. So we're gonna make a simple spicy sauce. And this is very much my tteokbokki sauce, but we're not gonna make it like soupy. We're starting with gochujang. So gochujang is Korean red pepper paste. I'm using a little less than I would normally for tteokbokki since we're not using any broth. Next we have gochukaru, which is Korean red pepper flakes. Next we have some sweetener. I'm using agave, but you can also use maple syrup or any sort of syrup. Next we're gonna use soy sauce and garlic powder. You can also use minced garlic, but I'm lazy and I'm using garlic powder. So we're just gonna mix this, and there's our very simple sauce. I feel like I can call this gnocchi, because it's kind of like gnocchi. This sauce is, mm, so good. All right, I think they're basically done. They should start floating to the top when they're done. And ooh, it does kind of look like tteokbokki. I'm gonna drain it first. Let's drain it. All right, dunk it in cold water. Okay, so it feels very nice and soft. Okay, so now this is the part where I'm gonna do my own thing, okay? So you can basically do any sauce with these noodles. You can follow her recipe, the original recipe, or you could do what I'm doing. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna dunk the noodles in here. Hmm? Some of them are broken, but that's okay. It adds character. Maybe I should have added more starch. So I did use just the two cups of starch. So that was about 300 grams. But if you wanted to, you could basically make tteokbokki out of this and just make it into the tteokbokki shapes, which would be easier to roll. Okay, so now that we have this, I think we can just dunk in the sauce. I feel like all the sauce is needed. I may need a little water as well, just to mix it all together. About half a cup of water. Please be tasty, please. I work so hard for you. All right, I'm gonna just let this like boil. While it's thickening up, we can chop up some green onion. Love to add some of that papa color on top. Guys, it's looking so good. As you can see, it's kind of getting nice and thick from that starch that's releasing. And obviously you can add in other things. I would probably add in some vegan hot dog slices or some like chickpeas, some kind of protein, or like puffed tofu, any sort of tofu really. I'd also maybe add tempeh or smoked tofu. Oh my God, smoked tofu goes so well with tteokbokki, so I feel like it would go really well here. Oh, I love that red color, it just is so satisfying. I feel like this would be so great to make if you're having a hard time finding rice cakes. I'm so excited to try it, and I wanna to compare to like actual rice cakes, so. All right, I'm just gonna let it cook down just a little bit longer, and then I think we can plate it, and then we can finally try! All right, guys, finally! We're, we're nearing the end, guys. We're nearing the end. This actually looks like tteokbokki. I'm actually shook. I am shooketh. I'm gonna plate it. Oh, my lord. So my noodles aren't as long as mine were breaking, but you know what? It don't matter. It don't matter because it looks delicious and hopefully it tastes as delicious as it looks. So now we're gonna top with sesame seeds, of course, that's a must, and 
green onion. Oh my god, it looks so good. It looks so good. Looks so good. <gasps> Y'all, that is a masterpiece. All right, guys, it's the moment of truth. Cheers! Okay, potato noodles, yay or nay? Oh my God. You guys, it is a success. It's so nice and chewy. It really reminds me of tteokbokki. It's not as sticky as tteokbokki, but it's probably the closest thing not made from rice, you know what I mean? I would say it's a cross between gnocchi and tteok. So, oh my god, it's actually really, really nice. The texture is so good. Mm. It's definitely not as like densely packed as the tteok, but holy. Mm. This is a success. Highly, highly, highly recommend making this, you guys. I'm actually so glad that I went to go and get the uh, yellow potatoes because this is definitely worth a try. This is a game changer. If you've ever wanted to try the Korean spicy rice cakes and you have a hard time finding Korean rice cakes, you can make this. These are such accessible ingredients, potato and starch. That's it, potato and cornstarch or potato and potato starch. And holy, it is actually delicious. It is a bit time consuming because you gotta roll individually, but I feel like you can impress some people with this dish. Thank you so much to Look At You for the inspiration. I'll link her video down below. This is really good. Her noodles looked better than mine, but that's okay because mine look pretty pretty delicious too. Mine look a little bit more like tteokbokki for sure. You gotta try this out. It is so good. It seriously reminds me of rice cakes and that is coming from a Korean. I'm a bit of a snobby Korean sometimes, okay? So if I say it tastes kind of like rice cakes, it's kind of like rice cakes, okay? It is very similar and um, it's definitely, definitely worth trying. I think they're so much fun and I can't wait to try different sauces with this as well. If you guys want the full written recipe, it will be in a blog post linked down below. Make sure you check that out and give the blog post a five star review if you enjoyed the recipe. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. I'm gonna link some videos down below for other recipes that you might wanna try. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You guys, make sure you follow me on Instagram and TikTok. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.